Hello everyone. I'm just going to wait a little bit. This is your girl Martine Myers, the award-winning author for Faces of Uterine Fibroids, coming in tonight to you shed a snippet of her story with the Womb Wellness Warriors on behalf of Kim Morris. So I'm going to wait for a few people to enter the room before we start. When you actually do come in, just say hello, please. I'm going to invite a few people to come through and watch. Just give me a moment. Two more minutes and then we're going to start. All right, one more minute and then we will start. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Martina Myers. I'm the award-winning author for Faces of Uterine Fibroids. Faces of Uterine Fibroids is actually an anthology book that I put together um, based on my personal story with fibroids. My journey started um, years ago. It's about a 21 year journey of pain agony with fibroids. And today, what I wanna bring to all of you is a highlight on the originality of what triggered the five boys to come about in my life and cause so much damage to me. So one um, thing that I want to talk to you guys today is an allergy that I have. It's um, basically an allergy of formaldehyde, formaldehyde allergy. And for those of you who don't know, fibroids are non-cancerous tumors in front of, that are in the uterus. Um, they're also on the outskirts of the uterus. I personally had fibroids inside of the uterus as well as the outskirts of the uterus. So it was um, pretty bad for me in terms of the way that I had the fibroids. But stepping from that, the, more, the big reason why I had this fibroid situation is because I became allergic with formaldehyde. For those of you who do not know what formaldehyde is, formaldehyde is actually um, a preservative, 
It is an embalming agent that is utilized in many different products that we use. Um, and I'm allergic to it. So first of all, how to get tested for, for formaldehyde? It's through a blood test, a blood test that's called IgE that I had. And um, it's a sample of blood that they take. And it basically allows you to know if you're positive for the allergy of called um, formalin. And that is the derivative name for formaldehyde. So once I became positive for that, and that was just like a couple of years ago, they discovered that um, I went through my whole fibroid journey um, just trying to basically remove myself from so many chemicals and so many different things that um, I was taking into my body. But once I realized that I had the allergy for formaldehyde, um, I started to research and know exactly where are these formaldehyde type of agents um, and what products they are. So I'm going to give you guys the list of where you can possibly find the formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is definitely in the majority of the cosmetic agents, the cosmetic uh, products that we use, toiletries, um, perfumes, fragrances, um, some type of paper products that you may utilize, glue, adhesive, um, paint, stripping, anti-stripping paint, um, some type of primers, you'll have formaldehyde in there. Um, formaldehyde is definitely an embalming fluid um, that is served as a preservative for uh, laboratory specimens. Um, they also use the formaldehyde in um, it's formaldehyde is also released like in smoke areas through cigarettes, natural gases, and kerosene. So me having the allergy of formaldehyde, I definitely cannot utilize things like um, hairspray. I cannot use regular nail polish from the bottle. Although I do do my nails on a regular basis, but I have to use something that doesn't have the formaldehyde in there, which is the powder type of uh, manicure um, that I do. It's only calcium and vitamin E. I have to stay away from formaldehyde. When it comes to the nail polish, I want to explain to you guys that um, I also have to take breaks in between, even though I use something that isn't chemically free, that has absolutely no chemicals, but I need to take breaks in between. So let's say I can do six months with constant doing my nails um, with the calcium um, vitamin A product, powder product, but then I could take a three to six month off to make sure that it doesn't affect me in any particular way because going to do your nails, being in an environment where there is acetone, acetone has formaldehyde in it, it is not good for uh, for me to be breathing it, it's not good for me to be in constant contact or in an environment where it is constantly, constantly being um, exposed, you know. So, um, now I want to brush up on the uncommon places where you can have the formaldehyde. Um, some places that are uncommon is permanent press products. The products that you use basically to press and iron your clothes. Um, Anti-static, anti-wrinkle type products, anti-shrink finishes, formaldehyde is actually there. You guys also have to think about the moth-proof, mildew-resistant products. Those cleaning agents, disinfectants that we use to clean our bathrooms, our floors, um, some of you may use it for the kitchen, those also have um, formaldehyde in it as well. Some sways, sham, sham, shamos, it's C-H-M-O-I materials, um, and fabrics, formaldehyde may be in there as well. Um, chlorine resistant finishes, okay? Chlorine resistant finishes, waterproof finishes, um, perspiration proof type finishes, formaldehyde are definitely in there. Hey sister, <laughs> thank you for coming on Miss Kim Morris and I 
thank you highly for actually having me today. I was actually giving a tidbit on my personal allergy with formaldehyde, and which is a, tr a, a derivative of my situation that I didn't know, but I just discovered it just about a, a year and a half ago that I had a major allergy of formaldehyde. So I was giving um, everyone the opportunity to hear, maybe for the first time, where you can actually be exposed with the formaldehyde, you know? And um, formaldehyde basically is in many different products, okay? Many different products. And as I stated earlier, um, the products we use on a regular basis is where you will find formaldehyde. Um, uh, those of you who are women, we are exposed to formaldehyde almost everywhere we go because cosmetic products, number one, lipsticks, you name it, toiletries, fragrances, perfumes. If it's not 100% natural base water, plant-based or whatever it is, it has formaldehyde in it. Why? Because formaldehyde needs it's 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 a it's a fluid that is utilized to preserve the product. It gives a shelf life to the product, okay? So we have to be mindful of that. Another thing, mascara has formaldehyde in there. I had an experience with mascara the other day and I realized that it was a very old mascara. Um, I'm not a makeup, uh, uh, everyday makeup person, but once in a while, you know, some events you go to, I want to be dolled up a little bit and I'll put on some makeup. And I had this mascara and once I put it on, my eyes were tearing and um, my eyes were actually tearing. They were burning, irritating me. And I do wear my contacts when I go out. So I was like, what is wrong? And I literally had that smell of chlorine covered like on my face. Like I could really sense that chlorine type of odor around me. And it's not until after I went to been going to the doctors, being tested, and I came the research came out that you, you are highly allergic to formaldehyde, Martine. You have to be mindful of that. So once I discovered that, that mascara, I realized it's been on my shelf for too long. I got rid of it. And then from then on, I don't even wear a mascara anymore because um, of fear. But I want you guys to be mindful that formaldehyde is huge. Now, how does formaldehyde affect your personal body? How does it trigger to be a, a fibroid or any type of tumor-induced type of problem? Well, when you use hairspray, perfumes, lotions, all of these things on your body, they go into your bloodstream. I personally um, had my first relaxer when I was 11 years old as a little girl. Reason being because my hair is super thick. It was a big job for my grandmother and for my mom. Um, so they decided to go relax my hair. I got a perm. Every time I went to go get a perm, I was always burning my scalp all the time. My scalp was always irritated. And I had to get my relaxers quite often because I had super thick hair. And most likely, my relaxers only lasted maybe a month. And the process was always, always like a detrimental process to me because of the burning, the irritation. I reached a point in my life where I could not do it anymore because I had neck pain, headaches, back pain, scabs in my scalp, um, inflammation around my shoulders, um, spasm around my arms not knowing exactly what it was. But lo and behold, and now that I know, relaxers, chemical products, those perms that we put in our hair have formaldehyde in it. Formaldehyde is the major ingredient that is utilized as a preservative for the shelf life of the perms and relaxers that we put in our hair. So putting the whole puzzle together many years later came to realize that formaldehyde is just a no-go for me you know I can't do with formaldehyde um, I don't use because of my because of my condition of what I went through with the fibroids of 21 years I had to adjust my lifestyle 
I had to adjust my lifestyle to first of all removing anything that is um, induced with formaldehyde. Anything that has formaldehyde in it, I do not utilize it. So, for the past 15, almost 20 years, I've been natural. Okay. Um, I wear braids, I wear my hair out, I'm Afrocentric type lady. Um, for my nails, I make sure that it's a powder type of um, manicure because I cannot utilize regular nail polish. Regular nail polish has formaldehyde in it. That's what keeps it on the shelf for very long. And you could have the nail polish for X amount of years and it may still be good. And what we got, what do we do? If it's thick inside the nail polish, we automatically take acetone and we pour inside of it to thin it out. And acetone is made with formaldehyde. Basically, you're putting formaldehyde, more formaldehyde into your nail polish. So whenever I would do my nails on my own, where I would just, you know, put a nail polish on, I would always have tingling sensations on my fingertips here. And then as it got worse, that I was constantly doing my nails or wearing the nail polish for maybe like a week or two, I would have um, peeling sensations all around the top tabs of my finger, okay? And then at one point, it got really bad that I could not actually hold the pen to actually write. My penmanship shifted, you know? My writing shifted. I, it was not even legible anymore. And I was having constant pain, um, just just spasms, really, on my arm going up, radiating to my shoulders. And all of it has to do with the fact that I was utilizing a product or many different products which had formaldehyde in it. And unfortunately, I was not fully aware of it. I was not educated on it. Neither were um, was my mom or my grandmother or anyone else around me. So situations happen everything was kept pouring into my bloodstream pouring into my bloodstream and it developed the non-cancerous tumors called fibroids you know so since then i had to adjust my lifestyle my lifestyle is consistent very consistent of detoxing um i detox pretty much daily you know for a while now all types of detoxes are great for you as long as you're cleaning your system. I have to clean out my, my system due to the fact that I cannot allow anything that I pour into my body, put on my body to remain because it will cause something else. You know, I will have an ulterior situation, which I'm very mindful of. You know, when you go through 21 years of pain, agony, stress, um, you go back and forth to the doctors and they really don't know exactly what your situation is and they know that yeah you have fibroids and then they give you this type of um, this type of diagnosis where it's like yeah it's fibroids it's nothing to worry about meanwhile um, I'm feeling uncomfortable I they're bothering me most of the time they tell you don't worry about fibroids because they don't bother people well they always bothered me okay and they bothered me to the point where right before I was granted a surgery by this doctor that I, he's like my miracle worker, who stated that, um, you know, I'm going to have to do the surgery for you because of the fact that you need to remove these bad boys inside of you. So I had my surgery and he was able to save my uterus, which was very important to me at that particular time when I had my surgery in 2016. Okay, um, since then, I had a grip on my health, myself, and I became educated about the womb, knowing exactly how to treat a woman, how, what, how important it is for you to clean out your system and for you to be mindful that your womb is a brain and it's all your womanhood comes from the right inside that womb space for, for you you know this is where you birth your thoughts this is where you birth everything okay your thoughts everything that you feel everything that's going on begins right there from generations to generations then that's when i got a grip on my life and knew that you know what martine I can move forward. It's not the end of the world. I've been quote unquote stigmatized at 21 years of fibroids, but 
it's okay. It's okay. And um, I can still move forward and do whatever it is that I need to do in my life. And I'm happy about that. You know, so the, the what I want to allow you guys to know, as long as you know what you're dealing with, you can always have a solution. Um, I, will always, I was always positive in terms of knowing that I was going to reach some place someday, somehow. Um, and I know that God would be on time. You know, when it comes to five boys, I'm going to let you guys know straight up. There's nothing good about five boys. I say to myself and other people that is the root of all evil because once you have fibroids a lot of other things start to happen to you a lot of other things start to happen to your body a lot of other things start to just trickle down on your mind and it's like one domino effect situation to another and that was my life however I didn't allow that to take over I didn't allow that to be the end I knew that I can turn it around with my faith with God with everything that I believe in I knew that I could turn it around so spiritually speaking I became spirit more spiritually sound I believe more and looked more within myself to allow myself to know that I can get myself out of this situation and it has helped me in many different ways um, many different ways when it comes to relationships, relationships on the job, love relationships, um, parental relationships, family relationships, friend relationships, connections, okay? Relationships with my ancestors, allowing them to know that I, I got this and I know that they're by my side and I can hold this down and I'm moving forward in their light, you know, with them. And I came to realize that this is not a job that like this is not a job or this is not like a situation that was just put on me for the heck of just putting negativity on me it's a situation that i have to face for me for women in my circle for the people i love for the people i cherish to allow them to know exactly um where what i went through and that it's not the very end and other people could go through it and that there's always a solution so this is how I all came about with everything. So going back to formaldehyde, and I don't want to get off that topic because it's very big, and I'm glad that I'm actually dropping it right here in the Womb Wellness Warriors because most people are not really familiar about the allergy with formaldehyde. They don't really think that it's a big deal, and they don't really know about it because a lot of people don't go walking around saying, I'm allergic to formaldehyde, okay? So if you guys want to get the allergy test for formaldehyde, please be sure to ask for the IgE blood allergy test at your doctor. You have to go see an allergist to get that test done. They do it in, within pathology, okay? So if you have to specifically ask for it because the majority of the time, a regular routine physical is not going to allow you to just do that test. First of all, it's costly. They have to be sure that it's covered under your insurance. And not only that, they want to make sure that there's a specific reason, has the medically necessary for you to be tested for that test, okay? It has to be medically necessary. And I'm going to repeat that. As a professional in the medical field, when it comes to health care administration, I'm going to tell you guys this. There are a lot of things that could have been prevented when it comes to your health but due to the fact that a lot of insurances don't just take it upon themselves to pay for services unless it is medically necessary, you have to make sure that your doctor is able to decipher and prove that the test that they're requesting for you is definitely medically necessary or else you're going to be slapped with a very big bill. Okay, and that's just the way it works. You know, it may not be fair, but that's just the way it works. Okay, that's the healthcare administration world that we deal with, um, and that's the way the establishment is. Okay, so I'm just letting you guys know firsthand that please be sure that when you do request a test for your doctor, you have to allow them to know signs um, and symptoms of what you possibly went through. Let them know that you know you may have gone through burning sensations with your eyes, irritations on your skin, yellowish parts of your skin. 
um, let them know that your your sensory nose may be off. You know, they have to know that something is in balance. One thing I dealt with a lot was dizziness, major dizziness. I was, my gait was off, you know. Um, let them know if those are symptoms that you see coming up and they're a, a bit reoccurring, jot it on your journal and let them know exactly what your system systems are so that they can be able to say that, okay, maybe you should be tested for that test, okay? So when we're done with that, I want to brush off on the fact that, like, the why, are formal, why is formaldehyde a product that is in so many different products out there? Now, the reason why they have it in many different products, especially the products that we use, is for the shelf life. They use it as preservatives. If some of you who are in the medical field, if you know anything about anatomy, anatomy um, when it comes to death, formaldehyde is actually used for medical research. Formaldehyde is actually used for funeral purposes, for the exposure of the body, okay? Um, like I said, it's an embalming agent, but the same embalming agent is utilized in many different products for the shelf life and also allows it to just... You know, they can sell it as long as they possibly want for a certain amount of time. And um, it keeps the business going. So those are not very good things for us to have, you know, out there for us to be buying. So I encourage everyone to be reading labels. You know, that's something that I had to do. I had to read labels. I had to read labels to be sure that whatever it is that I'm putting on myself is not going to be a determinant to me later. So for some people, it may not be something favorable to you, but when you go to the supermarket and you start reading labels, you become really educated in what you're putting in your system. Um, you really become educated as to what's real and what's fake. You want to know what's natural and what is basically, you know, 100% healthy for you. So please read the labels, you know. I'm not an advocate to tell people not to relax their hairs, you know, although I've been natural for over 15, year, 15 years, but... Um, I know for me, not having any chemicals in my hair has been the best route for me for my health. It's, it's a health decision that I made. Um, it may work out for you. Try it out and see. There are many different styles that you can do out there. But I know for me personally, I cannot put a relaxer in my hair. I cannot have anything that is going to manipulate my curl. I can't utilize it because anything that manipulates the curl, 99% of the time it has formaldehyde in there, you know, and that is not something that I can put at risk for myself. Um, so one of the negative reactions I want you guys to, I'm going to repeat for you guys, the negative reactions from the exposure of formaldehyde is itchy burning eyes. That's very important itchy burning eyes okay um, your skin dermatitis you know having irritations on your skin headaches I used to have headaches a lot of headaches a lot of different headaches headaches going into migraines all different versions of them um, don't play with headaches if you guys have headaches please jot it down and jot down the frequency jot down how many times you have it jot down the days you get it what were you doing when you had it because Headaches are, like, it's a problem that's a derivative of so many different issues that you could have going on with your mind, body, and soul that you really do not want to put yourself in a bad state, you know, just take care of it. Headaches are not cool, they're not normal, you're not supposed to be having them, don't play with them. Another situation I had was, um, I was not asthmatic, but I was wheezing from time to time, and that's the, the wheezing is the beginning point of where you start to move in the area of almost being asthmatic so I had difficulty breathing okay um, wheezing something that you don't want to mess with either has to do with your respiratory um, please pay attention to that if you're not asthmatic you shouldn't be wheezing you know if you are asthmatic please utilize a pump I came to a point where I had to utilize a pump you know and the pump is a buterin. A buterol, um, when they give it to you, um, what it does, it's supposed to open your airways. For me, unfortunately, I was 
since I really didn't need it, but the conditions of the fact that the exposure was so bad for me that I had to use a pump to help me, but it really hurt my chest. And a lot of people who use albuterol will know that if you really do not need it, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. So I was glad enough to reach a point where I just removed a lot of these things that the doctors were telling me, well, take this, take that. Like, you know, one thing I want to tell you guys, I'm not, a, I'm in the medical field in healthcare administration. I do not knock doctors. I do not knock anyone in the medical field. However, I'm going to tell you this. Each individual in your own mindset, you are your own physician. You are your own doctor. Reason being is because you wake up with yourself every day. You sleep with yourself every day. You know how you feel every day. You know what goes wrong with you every day. You know what's good with you every day. So which means what you need to do is with your mind, body, and soul, be mindful of all of your symptoms, all that you encounter in your life on a daily basis. Get a journal. Jot them down. Because when you go to the doctor, what they're going to ask you are questions. And this is how they do their assimilation for diagnosis. They're going to ask you, how did you feel today? How did you feel yesterday? How did you, how did you feel two days prior? It's all assimilation based on what you say. And that's how the diagnosis comes. A lot of times, a diagnosis does not always come from a possible testing unless it's something major and it has to be medically necessary to make sure that the test that they're giving you, that they're telling you to take is worthwhile. For not only for the doctor, but also for the fact that your insurance needs to pay it if you don't have any money, okay? So everything has to fall together. I'm telling you guys, Healthcare is a puzzle. You guys got to put it all together on your own. Present the package to your doctor. Let them know what you're willing to do, what you want to do, and what you're expecting. And that's how you're going to get your answer. If it's with that mindset that I was able to overcome 21 years of fibroids and still keep my uterus and still move forward and be a speaker and create a brand and do everything that I need to do for myself. But let me tell you, it took a lot of faith. It took a lot of faith. It took a lot of faith, a lot of faith, a lot of grounding okay from all areas of my life to put this together you know and the journey like I said it's a beautiful journey but at the same time it's not an easy journey because I go through a lot of different transformations on a daily basis being someone who came from five boys when you come from five boys I'm gonna tell you guys this as women we're emotional all the time but at the same time when you are a fibroid warrior a fibroid person like you've experienced fibroids your emotions are 10 times higher than a regular woman okay or another woman who basically doesn't have fibroids so to speak okay so you have to really be mindful of that your emotions are all over the place your mindset is different you think differently i mean that's more the reason why i tell you fibroids is the root of all evil is because it triggers so many different aspects of your life so many different areas you know you're always on guard you know literally you're always on guard you have to literally tell yourself to put your guard down you know to know that it's okay you know so it's just things like that another thing I want to focus on and a lot of people tend to not see it as very important fatigue and being lethargic I'm gonna put them together fatigue and being lethargic being overly tired is not normal. Being overly tired is not something that your body is supposed to go through. Loss of energy. Um, just when you wake up in the morning, your body is hurting you. That shouldn't be happening, okay? A good stretch out, should you should wake up first, first of all, being energetic, okay? When you wake up, your good stretch out and really releasing from everything that you came through from your sleep should just go away from the time that you wake up. A very good shower elevates you so on and so forth so there's really no reason for people to be a hundred percent lethargic all the time my past life with the fibroids I was always lethargic reason being because I had a low blood count the fibroids were sucking in my blood from my uterus literally my blood count if you read my book you will know that my blood count was extremely low 
Um, according to my doctors, I was like, basically, if you want to call it like the walking dead, because when you have an extremely low blood count, um, you're not coherent. You can't function well. You know, you just cannot do things like everybody else is able to do. You don't understand well. You know, you don't analyze well. You don't listen well. Some of us don't even listen. You just hear and you don't even hear well, you know. Um, you do everything your particular way at your pace based on how your body is going. So I want people to really focus on being lethargic, fatigue. It may, you made me anemic. I used to be anemic when I had five boys. I'm not anemic anymore, you know. Um, you guys need to really um, be mindful of these chronic signs and symptoms and things that happen to your bodies and not just brush them off because every sign that you get, every sign that you get on a regular basis with your body means something. It means something. It may not always mean something detrimental. It may not be fatal. It may not be something terrible, but it means something. That means you have to pay attention to the signs, okay? And uh, one thing I want to leave you guys with is that take your take it upon yourself to avoid certain fabrics. Those of you who like suede or really acrylic fabric or nylon fabric, um, those type of clothing, even some polyesters, be careful. Read the labels. When you're washing your clothes, look at the labels. There are possible formaldehyde extracts in there, okay? Embalming agents in there. A lot of times when you have these acrylic type of nylon, you know, material that is furry and all that stuff, be mindful of them. They're not just like cutesy um, fabrics, you know? They're put together a certain way with agents in them that may not be good for you so you guys have to really look into that household products um looking into you utilizing more natural household products is the key because a lot of the household products out there when you're cleaning your bathroom you're cleaning your kitchen you have uh, bleach chlorine and all these other stuff in there believe you me embalming agents are in there formaldehyde is a derivative for the disinfectants they're always in there. Why? Because it's a preservative and it is there for the sh to, to help the shelf life, a long endurance shelf life. That's why maybe sometimes you could have detergent or some type of household product that is on your shelf maybe for like six months to a year because it's already well preserved to be able to do that type of shelf life. But at the same time, knowing that when you're actually, if you're the one, the one doing the cleaning, or you could be the one in and out being the receiver of the product. It could be detrimental to your health. It could be detrimental to your respiratory area. Um, it's detrimental to your skin. You know, you can breathe it. It's, it's terrible. So all of these particular things here that I mentioned earlier as well as now, um, I need you guys to really focus on that. Okay, and I want everyone to know that formaldehyde is is real. Okay, it's not just utilized for the dead. Okay, it's utilized actually on a daily basis in your life before you actually reach death. Um, unfortunately, as I take the time to think, you know, for those people who don't know and don't really are not aware of this formaldehyde and that it could be an allergy. It's like they're actually utilizing products and working towards their death because all the makeup that they're putting on, all the toiletries that they're using, all the sprays that they're, they're, they're utilizing, the perfumes, you know. I mean, some products in terms of the scents that you use for the house, like um, they have crystalline products where they have these little balls. They have formaldehyde in them. I just want you guys to know that, okay? Um, these like smell good type products that you put in your house and everything like just use natural candles okay um, so that's what I mean like when you are in a situation where for me I went through 21 years of fibroids it's a major health problem for me um, it took away a lot of my life 
It deterred me from many different things. It slowed down a lot process in many different relationships for me. Um, I had to change my lifestyle in order to win back time loss. I had to adjust my lifestyle. So I had to put myself in a situation where I'm constantly cleansing myself. I'm constantly detoxing. I'm not saying that I'm a manic, but I know that certain foods are not worth eating. Or if I'm going to eat certain things because, you know what, we're human and there are times where we get little cravings, then I know, you know what, I need to utilize a detox tea. Or I need to find a way to flush something out of my system, like flush out my system. Or, you know, I may need a vagina detox. I mean, you know, a lot of different things. Like you have to train your mind to be able to know that, you know what, whatever you put on your body, whatever you put in has to come out. And that's just the life that I live. Okay, literally. And I go around teaching and letting people know that this is what you should be doing with yourself. This is the mindset that you should have. Because basically nothing that is... Nothing that we are, there's not anything that we are actually um, born with that, that, and nothing that we use right now that we should be putting in our body and it should stay in our body. We're not born with it. You understand what I'm saying? We're not born with it. So there's no reason for us to not clean off ourselves. There's no reason for us to not detox. There's no reason for us to not really take it upon ourselves to really take care of ourselves to know what we're putting on our bodies. Your lotions, by all means, um, check to see. They have formaldehyde in them. You know, they have formaldehyde in them. Your eyebrow, um, your eyebrow pens, especially the crayons. Um, we have the ones, the mechanical ones right now. We also have the liquid. They have formaldehyde in them. But at the same time, we're not telling you not to utilize these products, but look for alternative products because there are more natural products on the shelves. The only thing is that you have to do your business to look for them because those are not the ones they're making commercials for. Those are not the ones that they're actually informing you to buy. So you have to do your own research to know based on your own condition what where to find your stuff. And that's all that I've been doing all my life for the past um few years after my surgery in 2016 looking to see how to alternate the things that i use and what i do for myself to make it better you know um when i tell people that i take it upon myself to help women live a better life in terms of being the best version of themselves it's really true because that's what i do in my regular life you know, that is what I do in my regular life. I'm always looking for a better way, um, a better way and always looking for a better product that I can utilize that is best for me, for my livelihood and the people around me. You know, um, one thing I want to tell you guys, being a fibroid warrior, a woman who suffered fibroids for 21 years, of course, it's not easy. And you guys know that. Okay, um, but you become the pioneer for the other women around you, especially when you survive all this particular time. Now, for those of you who do have fibroids, and if your journey is shorter than mine, I do not want you to feel less than, okay? Um, a fibroid, somebody who, who suffered from fibroids, a fiber warrior is a fiber warrior. Whether your condition was one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, mine 21 years. You know what? We all suffer the same things because all the symptoms are the same. The symptoms are the same, okay? All of you guys can partake in my pain, you know? All of you guys can partake the possibility of maybe not being able to be a mother yet, you know? Uh, many can partake in the fact that maybe because they're not mothers yet, you know? Um, so those are things that we suffer as women on a normal basis and it's an internal thing. Um, you know, and that is something that I battled with. I battled with, you know, um, not being able to function properly sexually because of the fact that I had fibroids is huge. And that is something that I had to confront in my life and, become happy with to acceptance of my condition 
And my acceptance of my condition is what allowed me to move forward and be able to be in a fruitful relationship today. Okay. But it was all a process. So, you know, I want to leave you guys with, you know, just, just don't give up. Don't give up because you just don't know what's next for you. You really don't know what's next for you. You don't know what the world has out there for you. You don't know what God has put out there for you. Um, you just have to keep pressing forward. Um, I surely did press forward. 21 years plus, you know. Um, I recently, just two years ago, found out that I had this allergy for formaldehyde. Um, I started cutting things out of my life uh, a, a bit early because I've been natural for 15, close to 20, some white years. But at the same time, although I didn't know my major allergy to formaldehyde, but I started making small changes. Um, back then, they didn't really have that much of an education about the womb. They didn't really... We didn't really have all of these things out there. It wasn't like outspoken as it is today. Womb wellness was not something that most women knew about. But I'm going to let you guys know this. My situation has allowed me to tap into the essential part of my family. Um, and the essential part of my family has allowed me to know and become comfortable, not only in my situation, but also to become comfortable to know that womb wellness was always alive it was always alive it was always there um i'm from haitian descent in haiti we do vaginal detox um it was something regular it was something that actually a lot of my aunts did post-pregnancy to regroup and restore it's a part of restoration for the womb to make sure everything comes back together. But the thing about it, we were not educated enough to know that the detoxing for the vagina is something that we can actually do pre, you know, before the whole pregnancy thing to prepare ourselves as a woman, as part of our womanhood, you know, and that's something that I had to learn. Um, and that's something that I'm very grateful to have in my life because it allows me to continue to move forward and not have to worry of the fact that the possibility of fibroids will come back, you know. And that's something that I had to deal with and worry, it kind of worry about because a lot of doctors were telling me, well, you know, we really didn't want to do this surgery for you, Martine, because of the fact that with your age and everything else, you know, what if they come back? They, they always do come back for a lot of different people. But I was looking at them like, why are you putting this stigma on me and not grant me a surgery that I actually need for the time being because of the fact that fibroids may come back? It just doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, if I actually did not take it upon myself to find a doctor who was going to grant me that surgery, I probably wouldn't be here today. Because of a very low blood count, I started having heart issues. I almost went into heart failure. If I didn't have the open myomectomy at the time that I had it in 2016, the possibility is that I probably wouldn't be able to do what I do right now as a speaker, as an award-winning author, you know, because I just wouldn't be here, you know. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys this. Please focus on when your body gives you a message. Focus on it. Write it down. Create a health journal for yourself, just for yourself. When you go to the doctor, allow them to know that you've been tracking yourself, your conditions, Whatever's been coming up or going down with you, you've been tracking it. So when they ask you those questions, you are very much on top of your game to allow them to know that you know what you're talking about. Because never, uh, never allow any physician or any healthcare professional to implant anything in your mind to tell you what they think you need. Always allow them to know you know what you want, you know what you need, you know where you're going, and you know what you're doing, okay? That's exactly what you need to do. 
Hello, Grayson. Thank you for coming on. You know, so this is what I want you guys to know. Like, you have to tell the physicians your position in life. You have to let them know what your expectations are. And you have to have expectations. That's why you have to have your journal. You have to have expectations. You have to know, like, this is my desire. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to accomplish. This is what I want to do. And this is what I need to, this is what I need to do to get there. And that's exactly what my attitude was like. What's up, queen? <laughs> you know, this is, what, this is what my attitude was like. And it's still that way. And it gets better as we go along. So, please, once again, I'm going to reiterate to you guys. Formaldehyde is no joke. Most people walking around today don't know that they may have the possibility of the allergy of formaldehyde. However, if you have the symptoms of itchy, burning eyes, irrit irritable skin, okay, um, sometimes you may have some bit of inflammation on your skin, all right? Constant headaches turning into migraines. That is not something you want to play with. Please, by all means, look into it. Go to the doctor. Do something, you know, be advised on whatever the condition is, okay? Wheezing. If you're not asthmatic, you shouldn't be wheezing. And if you're wheezing, you have some sort of respiratory situation, okay? That is not kosher, all right? So you need to look into that because that's not cool. All right. If you don't need to use a respiratory pump, don't use it because using a butyrol, it takes a lot to take that out of your system. OK, I've been there. All right. If if it's not a must, don't do it. All right. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There are a lot of physicians out there that are taking a butyrol and just utilizing it for, you know, simple, like difficulty breathing. That's not something that they should be using for, for a symptom of difficulty breathing, okay? That is, you, a butyrol is to be utilized for asthmatic people, okay? People who have asthma, people who have a history of asthma, okay? The, you know, their bronchioles are closing, okay? Their lungs are contracting. They're the ones who should use a respiratory pump. And that's what a butyrol is for. It is not for the fact that, oh, you know, I, 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 I just feel uncomfortable or I'm, I'm coughing a lot. I can't breathe. I, no, it's not. Okay. You have a stuffy nose. They, they're going to give you a pump. You tell them no. Okay. Because I've seen it happen before. I've worked in emergency rooms before. I know it. Say no. You ain't taking it because you don't need it. That's not what you need. Okay. I had to say no at times. And there are times, honestly, I really went against some medical advice because I knew that that's not what my body needed at that particular moment. But at the same time, I'm glad I made a con concrete decisions for myself because those concrete decisions today is what allowed me to move forward and live on today. Okay, so you just have to know yourself, know who you are. Focus and journal your life, your everyday ups and downs. And once you get within yourself, you will know who that inner person is. And you will know when you're feeling good. You'll know when you're feeling bad. You'll know when there's something wrong. you know when something is not kosher. You'll know that's when something is off. Okay? So that is exactly what will save you that's what will help you that's what will allow you to move forward and that is what will allow you to be an assistant to the physicians that are actually looking upon to help you okay so as i told you guys avoid a lot of products out there nylons some polyesters you know these crazy acrylic knits they kind of itch your body a little bit. There's certain things in there that makes your body itch, okay? So don't don't focus on them too much. Don't utilize them too much. I cannot utilize them at all because they're irritable to my skin. So, And those have some derivatives of formaldehyde in them. And if I'm allergic to formaldehyde, then I cannot use them at all. Like, they can't touch me, you know? Um, fragrances, perfumes... Read the labels, household products, read the labels, okay? 
Uh, some of you may want to use moth balls in your drawers, your closets. Read the labels because moth balls do have derivatives of um, formaldehyde because the formaldehyde, as I told you, is utilized as a preservative. Hairspray. I mean, this isn't really not the era for hairspray, but we still have people using hairspray because they still sell hairspray and, and they make money with hairspray. So if you guys are going to use hairspray, just think about formaldehyde because formaldehyde is definitely hairspray. Some of your shampoos look at the labels. Some of your conditioners, especially conditioners, okay, hair conditioners, look at the labels. Formaldehyde, formaldehyde is definitely in it. Okay, if you don't see it say formaldehyde, you'll see formalin, F O R M A L I N. That is the like the mother name for formaldehyde. So a lot of times they may not have the whole world from the whole word formaldehyde. But if you see formalin, that is the same word. It's just like you know the generic name basically. Okay. Um, let me see if I had anything else that I wanted to put on the table for you guys. And for you guys who really don't know, formaldehyde is also used as a preservative for some vaccinations, okay? I don't know which vaccinations, you know? I, I, but just to be mindful, they're also used as preservatives for vaccinations. Like I said, formaldehyde is a very good user for the shelf life of products, okay? And it's also, as we stated, um, it's util utilized in pathology as well for the, the readiness of tissues, okay? Um, and you guys know that formaldehyde is an embalming agent. It preserves uh, the body for funerals and also medical research and anatomy. All right. So that's all I'm going to keep you guys with. I want to thank Miss Kim Morris, deeply down from my heart, for allowing me to come into her world today at Womb Wellness Warriors to shed some light on a snippet of my personal story and also to bring awareness in this July 2019 fibroid awareness month as I stated to you guys before fibroids um, like I said for me it's the root of all evil but it's not the end of the road so I encourage everyone to if you do have fibroids or whatever the situation is just don't be don't be discouraged. It's there's always a way out of a situation. There's always a solution. You just have to tap into your God-given inner self, your God-given gifts, and really see exactly what's what's in there for you. Because there's something um, within us. There's a treasure within us for every situation that we go through. We just have to find it. And I'm glad that I, I reached the point in my life where I did find my treasure to allow me to move forward and become healthy, um, become wise, you know, a lot wiser within myself to know how to make better choices. Because that's really what it's all about is making better choices. OK, um, there are a lot of other different things that I could highlight on, but formaldehyde is something that is near and dear to me and I wanted to take it upon myself to drop it right here for you guys because um, most people don't talk about it because most people don't know about it and it's really not existent until you've actually gone through the experience yourself so if you guys are interested in my book by all means it's faces of uterine fibroids right here faces of uterine fibroids my name is Martine M. Myers I'm on Amazon you can find the book on Amazon and anyone interested um, and following me in terms of what I do in my speak outs is joinmartinemyers.com. Thank you so much, Kim, for having me. And I thank everyone who came in tonight to listen to a snippet of my story. I look forward to seeing you all again. Take care. Have a good night. Bye.